Welcome to an introduction to Nevada Geothermal. This video was created for the Geothermal Resource Council 2020 conference, but may be useful to anyone wanting to get to know more about geothermal in Nevada. I am Courtney Brelo from the Nevada Division of Minerals, and we at the division are happy to be working with the Nevada Governor's Office of Energy and the Nevada Bureau of Mines and Geology at this year's booth. I hope you find this introduction useful, and if you have any questions, please reach out to us at our 2020 GRC virtual booth or by using the contacts listed on our websites. This video starts with a background of geothermal in Nevada, which includes geologic setting, historical production, and plant overview. Information on state agencies represented at this booth starts around the eight minute mark. We hope you enjoy getting to know more about us. So let's start with a basic question. Why do we consider Nevada a geothermal state? Well, Nevada is the second largest producer of geothermal energy has the largest area of geothermal potential and the greatest number of hot springs in the U.S. This geothermal potential map produced by the USGS shows an area of hotter, higher geothermal potential in red, orange, and yellow colors, and we see areas of increased potential across the western United States. As you can see, Nevada sits in the middle of that increased area, with widespread yellow, orange, and some red on the map. But why is that? From a geologic perspective, the Earth's crust is being strained and faulted in this region. When you overlay the strain map from 2012, made by Creamer and others, which shows the motion of GPS stations across the southwestern U.S., we see a similar pattern, with areas of higher strain corresponding largely to areas of higher geothermal potential. This includes the Walker Lane region, where San Andreas-like regional motion is spread over many faults just east of the Sierra Nevada mountain range, Granitic Walk. This also includes basin range style faulting created from extensional forces that form Nevada's mountain and valley topography. These areas form a dispersed zone of heat relatively close to the Earth's surface. In Nevada, geothermal resources are used for the generation of electricity, water and space heating, and commercial uses like dehydration processes. Here is a view of the cooling towers at Dixie Valley on a cool Nevada day. As you can see, there are many reasons to be interested in Nevada's geothermal potential. The Nevada Bureau of Mines and Geology conducted a study that characterized geothermal potential of the northern part of our state. The Bureau was especially interested in blind systems, those that do not have hot springs or other expressions of heat at the surface. They created this map in 2017. It's been a great resource fueling exploration in our state. Since Nevada is over 80% federally managed with much of that land belonging to the Bureau of Land Management, the BLM, land often becomes available for geothermal exploration and production by the nomination of leases across the state. As a leading provider of renewable energy in the state along with solar, Geothermal energy is important in maintain, maintaining Nevada's renewable energy portfolio standard, which has reached its minimum of 22% for 2020 and is slated to increase to 50% by 2030. So, similar demand from California initiatives are often filled by Nevada's geothermal resources as well. This is a video of Nevada's Soda Lake Field, one of the earlier producers in the state which recently upgraded to a new binary plant to improve efficiency. While a flash system uses steam, either straight from the resource or from hot water that is brought to the surface to turn a turbine, binary systems like these use an alternate fluid that steams at a lower temperature than water to turn the turbine. The alternate fluid is cooled in a closed loop and reused in the system. You are looking at the cooling towers of the Soda Lake plant here. Binary plants are able to utilize heat sources in fields that would otherwise be too cool for a flash system, which requires temperatures of about 300 degrees Fahrenheit. Or it can also increase the productivity of systems that are rather hot, as in this case. In fact, Soda Lake is home to one of the hottest wells and is one of the hotter fields in the state. Electricity produced at this plant is purchased by Envy Energy and adds power to Nevada's electrical grid. There are 26 geothermal plants at 17 locations throughout the state. Nevada geothermal fields exist predominantly in the northern portion of the state and have an average temperature of around 277 degrees Fahrenheit. So at this temperature, plants rely mostly on binary systems to effectively operate. 
The map shown on the left displays geothermal plant locations, and on the right, the associated average temperatures for each field spanning all years of production are presented, which vary from approximately 175 to 325 degrees Fahrenheit. Nevada has been in the geothermal business since the mid-1980s. This timeline shows when Nevada electrical power plants were brought online, with the labeled blue bar corresponding to the year and the length of the bar corresponding to the plant's nameplate capacity in megawatt hours. Underlined plant names signify flash plants, binary plants are not underlined, and plants with names in italics indicate plants that are no longer in commission. Exploration for geothermal started in Nevada in the late 1970s, and binary plants were introduced in the U.S. in 1981 by ORMAC under a U.S. Department of Energy grant. Not shown on this graph are domestic, commercial, or local utility use, like space or water heating, as this graph represents only plants that produce electricity. It is interesting to note that the Elko Heating District was formed in 1982, and the Moana District in Southern Reno was formed in 1983, and more recently, the Peppermill Casino, also in Southern Reno, added geothermal heating to its resort in 2010. I'm going to zoom in on this graph so we can look at it more closely. Wabusco was the first geothermal plant in Nevada and has been running a binary system since it started in 1984. A mix of binary and flash systems were developed throughout the late 1980s, with Beowawi and Dixie Valley flash plants still in operation today. A second wave of geothermal development began in the 2000s and has continued to today. Some plants were upgraded to new or improved binary systems during that time, like Brady and Steamboat Hills, which just finished this year. Others added binary to their existing plant, like Beowawi and Dixie Valley, or completely replaced plant facilities, like in the case of San Emilio and Desert Peak. New plants also emerged during that time, like Blue Mountain, McGinnis Hills 1-3, through Tuscarora, Patua, and Don Campbell, some of which have a name plate capacity of almost 50 megawatt hours. Nevada geothermal production reflects the development of these plants and the geothermal fields associated with them. As you can see by the green bars, which represent geothermal production in megawatt hours sold, production has a significant increase, both in the late 1980s and again in the 2000s, with the variable price, the gray bar, hovering around 8 cents per kilowatt hour in recent years. Last year, production in the state increased by 12% to 3.9 million megawatt hours sold. We would now like to take a few moments to recognize each of the agencies involved with making this year's Geothermal Resource Council Convention booth a success. We will start with the Nevada Division of Minerals, who is the state regulatory agency for drilling, completion, and maintenance of all geothermal wells in Nevada. Since nearly half of all geothermal wells are drilled on federal lands, the division works closely with the BLM, who is the lead agency throughout the permitting process. The Division Minerals conducts well inspections for the duration of well life, collects production data, and publishes reports, maps, and other information for public use regarding geothermal and mineral topics throughout the state. This graph shows the number of wells permitted and the numbers of wells drilled by type for each year since the division took over geothermal well permitting in 1985. Blue colors represent wells permitted, while the maroon color represent wells actually drilled. The darker colors at the tops of each bar graph represent thermal gradient and observation wells, which are used for exploration and reservoir monitoring respectively, and are the most numerous geothermal wells of the state. The next slider colors on the stack bars consist of industrial production and injection wells, which are used in geothermal fields that produce energy. Domestic and commercial wells in gray make up the smallest segment of the geothermal wells in the state. Similar to the production and plant construction data we saw earlier, industrial well drilling and permitting numbers increased during the time of plant construction and contributed to the increase production we saw in the late 1980s, early 1990s, and 2000s. For more information on any of these topics, please visit the Nevada Division of Minerals website at minerals.nv.gov. The bottom of the homepage has important links, such as links to our open data site and to our partners, the Governor's Office of Energy and the Bureau of Mines and Geology.
The geothermal program page has contact information and important information regarding geothermal wells and well permitting, including recent updates to the Nevada Administrative Code, where regulations were updated for clarity in requirements and changes to well bonding. The Nevada Division of Minerals also hosts an Esri Open Data site, and as I mentioned, the link to this is on our homepage at the bottom, and the URL uh, to access the site is listed here. The open data site includes a map featuring current and historic geothermal well information and production data. Links to the Bureau of Mines of Geology Ge geothermal pages are also found here, which allows users to search for a particular well API number and to access well logs and other public data. For an explanation on how to use this resource to access geothermal data, please visit our second video at this GRC booth or available on our YouTube page. Garrett Wake is now going to present information from the Governor's Office of Energy, followed by Dr. Falds and Dr. Ailing from the Bureau of Mines and Geology, our partners in this GRC booth. The Nevada Governor's Office of Energy, or GOE, oversees energy programs required through statute and those that help to meet the mission of the office. The mission of the GOE is to ensure the wise development of Nevada's energy resources in harmony with local economic needs and to position Nevada to lead the nation in renewable energy production, energy conservation, transportation electrification, and the exportation of energy. The GOE implements the laws of the state as defined in Nevada Revised Statutes 701 and 701A, manages energy-related programs, facilitates cooperation between key stakeholders, advises the governor on energy policy, and collaborates with local, regional, and federal partners to ensure a reliable and sustainable energy system. The Renewable Energy Tax Abatement Program came under the Governor's Office of Energy's jurisdiction in July 2009. The program awards partial sales and use tax and partial property tax abatements to eligible renewable energy facilities. The program helps attract developers to Nevada because it provides incentive for the construction on commercial power plants. These projects increase Nevada's tax revenue and lead to job creation in this growing industry. The Governor's Office of Energy staff reviews the abatement applications, conducts public hearings to determine eligibility, and renews annual compliance audits after abatements have been granted. Qualifying projects could potentially be eligible to up to a 55% property tax abatement for 20 years and three years of sales tax abatement. Projects that have received a partial abatement through the Renewable Energy Tax Abatement Program have created over 10,000 jobs and attracted over $8.3 billion in capital investments, payroll, and taxes paid thus far. For more information, please visit our booth and ask an Office of Energy representative your questions or go to energy.nv.gov. Greetings, this is Jim Falls, Nevada State Geologist and Director of the Nevada Bureau of Mines and Geology. The Bureau of Mines and Geology serves as Nevada's uh, State Geological Survey. Its mission is defined by state statutes and essentially we're the Bureau of Analysis, Information, and Exchange on Nevada Geology and Natural Resources and Geologic Hazards. Essentially, we uh, conduct applied geology for the public good. Uh, this includes archiving and disseminating geologic data, elucidating Nevada's geologic framework, especially its geologic hazards and natural resources, with the ultimate goals of enhancing public safety and facilitating ec economic development for the state. Uh, this um, uh, link here is a seven minute uh, sort of summary of what the Nevada Bureau of Mines and Geology does uh, and the research that we conduct uh, across the state. This is our basic structure and outcomes. There are several different components to the Bureau, including our research and teaching faculty, our cartographic GIS and publication support staff, uh, the Great Basin Science Sample and Records Library, which serves as a repository for geoscience data and uh, collections, uh, physical collections for the state, and of course our administrative support. 
we have about 27 full-time employees. And some of the major outcomes are natural resource assessments for minerals, geothermal, oil and gas, geologic hazard assessments for earthquakes, floods, landslides, geologic framework studies that includes geologic mapping and the production of regional databases. And in a typical year, we produce um, uh, more than 50 uh, research papers. Uh, we have about $4 million in active grants and, and common, commonly bring in more than $3 million uh, in external grants in a given year. We also play a significant role in teaching uh, courses at the University of Nevada, Reno, and we advise, uh, collectively advise about 20 uh, graduate students, about one third of the geoscience uh, graduate students at UNR. This is the basic or organizational chart for the Bureau. You can see that we consist of uh, research and teaching faculty over here on the left, our cartographic GIS group, the Great Basin Science Sample and Records Library, the Nevada Geodetic Laboratory, and of course, the Great Basin Center for Geothermal Energy. Thank you very much. As introduced by Jim Balds on the previous slide, the Great Basin Center for Geothermal Energy is part of the Nevada Bureau of Mines and Geology and lives also within the Mackey School of Earth Sciences and Engineering at the University of Nevada, Reno. It was established in 2002 with the mission to work closely with the, with the US geothermal industry to help establish geothermal energy as a sustainable, environmentally sound and economically competitive contributor to energy supply in the Western USA. If you'd like to visit our website, the link is shown here. You can find information on our current research projects, educational opportunities, and also see some of our data sets and geothermal products, including our web map that I'll be talking about later. Some of the activities in the Great Basin Center include conducting innovative and applied research, this includes investigating the geological factors that control where geothermal resources are located in the Great Basin region and why they occur where they do. We are also developing new approaches for geothermal exploration to increase the discovery of blind or hidden geothermal systems that have no surface thermal expression, such as hot springs or fumaroles. And we're also doing some subsurface characterization to help us understand the conceptual models of our geothermal resources, which in turn helps optimize the development and the sustainable management of these geothermal reservoirs in the region. Part of our work involves supervising graduate undergraduate students, and we also collaborate with industry partners to address current geoscience challenges. The National Geothermal Academy is an intensive summer short course training program that aims to train the next generation of geothermal scientists and engineers. This is offered most summers and the topics vary depending on interest, but include aspects of geoscience and engineering and sometimes environmental aspects as well. On our last point here, we have data dissemination and outreach. These are really important activities for us and we are really working hard to make sure that the geothermal community has access to the most up-to-date geoscience information, as well as various products and, um, and publications about geothermal exploration in the state of Nevada and beyond. I'd like to highlight three active research projects that we're working on in the center at present. And these are all funded by the US Department of Energy's Geothermal Technology Office. The first project is the Nevada Machine Learning Project. This one builds on the previous Play Fairway projects that ran from 2015 to 2019, with the goal of applying advanced machine learning techniques to ultimately, hopefully, improve and revise our Play Fairway exploration workflow and help us discover new hidden geothermal systems in Nevada. This project is set to be completed in um, spring next year, 2021. The second project is the Steptoe Valley project. The goal of this one is to understand the permeability and the thermal regime of the sedimentary hosted or stratigraphic geothermal resource in Steptoe Valley in eastern Nevada. This one's just getting started and will run for two years. 
The third project mentioned here is the Ingenious Project. This one is just getting started and will kick off in December of this year. And the goal of this one is to accelerate the reduction of geothermal exploration risk for hidden hydrothermal systems in the broader Great Basin region by developing novel exploration workflows and helping explorers improve their chances of success of discovering a new blind resource. Something else that we're working on is improving our geothermal databases. For the last couple of years, we have been developing a new large-scale relational database that will warehouse all the subsurface geothermal data for Nevada and the Great Basin region. Our vision is that this will be the single point of truth for all geothermal-related data, including geology, geochemistry and spring data, and well data sets, including downhole geophysical logs. At the moment, we are developing an ESRI web application that will allow the geothermal community to access the database, visualize data, conduct queries and explore relationships, and ultimately export the data for their own uses. The full version will be live at the end of this year, but we do have a beta version available made for this conference, and the link for this is on the main booth site. Um, we are interested in getting your feedback on the, on the user experience here, so please email Eli Malorski. His email is on the front page of the beta version of the web app. And we look forward to hearing comments and your experiences in using it so far. Thank you very much. Thank you so much for taking the time to visit our Geothermal Resource Council 2020 conference booth and learning more about geothermal in Nevada. Please contact us at the booth using the chat or Q&A functions, or reach out to us by email or phone. Information is listed on our websites. Also, check out the live educational session on Thursday at 12.30 Pacific time when Dr. Bridget Aileen will present an update of 2019 and 2020 geothermal activities in the state. Enjoy the conference and have a great day.